741 is a song I wrote about my mother. It's a personal depiction of how I felt about her passing and what happened to her. 741 is the number of the room that she was in when she initially had to be put in the ICU. The song could be seen as a journal entry. All of the feelings and emotions my family and I have been feeling. All of the questions and thoughts that run through our minds constantly. I want this song to connect to others that may have also physically lost their mothers or close loved ones. I also want the same people to understand that their loved ones are still with them. And in so many ways, they are watching. I know my mom is. Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy Douglas, or you can call me Freedom. Welcome back to my channel. I missed you guys so much. It's really been a long time since I've actually posted some content on this channel and y'all already know New Year. So we're going to give you all the tea, all the content that you need. Now, I thought it would be cool to do this lyrical synopsis of my new song that's out. If you guys haven't heard it yet, please go and check out my new single, 741, and my single that came out before that, the theme song for the Freedom Savage podcast, Talk To Me. And don't forget to tune in to the Freedom Savage podcast as well. Now, I go more into how 741 actually came about in my podcast, but in this video, I kind of wanted to do more of like a genius style video, more of a lyrical breakdown. Before we start the video, you guys might hear a little bit of cracking and stuff in my voice. Uh, my mom's birthday was yesterday and we partied very hard, so just forgive me for that. My neighborhood has kind of been the purge lately, so you might hear a lot of cop cars. It's been horrible. Um, so just know that there's going to be noise in the background <laughs> and that I can't do nothing about it. Yes, this microphone isn't actually hooked up to anything or on. Didn't feel like it. Thought it would be kind of cute to just have it. Um, shout out to Jasmine for the mic. <laughs> Brother is in the background. He tends to make noise a lot. Please, 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 please forgive me for the noise. Like, comment, and share this video, and subscribe to my channel because you need me. Other than that, I think we could really get started. Thank God, this is my own music, so we ain't even gotta worry about no copyright or nothing like that. All right, let's get into 741. It was only that day that I learned to realize that life will hand you hardships And that you gotta go through all the pain and there's no getting around it It hurt me, it broke me, traumatized me, consumed me And what hurt the most is that you couldn't even get up to say you love me Okay, so obviously there was a lot to unpack there. Now, as you guys already know, 741 is an ode to my mom. It's my personal depiction of her passing. Once you hear the hook, you already get to feel a lot and there is a lot to unpack within the hook. If we go to the beginning of the hook, you guys see that I start off by saying, it was only that day that I learned to realize that life will hand you hardships and that you gotta go through all the pain and there's no getting around it. So what those lyrics basically mean is that the day my mom initially passed out and had to be put in the ICU and the day she actually passed, my family and I were going through so much on both days. And my entire family, even my mom herself, you know, we believe this concept that everything in life happens for a reason. And that sometimes you have to, and in the words of Nikki, you have to see your darkest hour before you see your dawn. This wasn't the first time that my mom had a health scare. Um, she had to be rushed to the hospital several times in the last couple of years. And she endured a lot of challenges. And we as a family endured a lot of challenges when it came to my mom's health. And the day she initially passed out and had to be put in the ICU and the day she actually passed away was some sort of solidification to me that kind of showed me that like, you know, you, I don't know why all the way we have to go through it, but for some reason we get thrown curveballs in our lives and it's curveballs that we get thrown that we cannot control and there's nothing that we can do about it. After I kind of start to hook off with that little message, I then start to say it hurt me, it broke me, traumatized me, consumed me. 
when I say that, I'm saying that although I do believe those concepts that I just spoke about previously and those messages and those life terms, it doesn't hinder the fact that emotionally I still felt destroyed when everything happened to my mother. I end the hook by saying, and what hurt the most is that you couldn't even get up to say you love me. For the first few weeks she was in the hospital, she was on life support and was not able to speak. She was in a medically induced coma. As you can already imagine, I bet a lot of you can't. It was very scary and traumatizing to see my mother that way. A and then you're talking to a kid that I'm a mama's boy. So I was always up under my mother, always able to talk to my mother. It hurt to see her in the hospital that way. And she couldn't even speak. And then she was bedridden to the point where she couldn't even sit up on her own. And I remember crying some days when I was in the hospital to visit her because the main thing that I wanted her to do was get up. And I just remember telling myself, like, why can't you get up? Like, I just want you to get up, you know? And it all happened within the hour. Couldn't even shower. I felt like panicking. What could I do? I was just a baby. I'm your baby. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so when I say that it all happened within the hour, I'm referring to the day she initially had to go to the hospital. She had passed out and then within an hour had lost oxygen and immediately had to be put on life support. But it all happened within the span of one hour. So that's what I mean by, and it all happened within the hour. I couldn't even shower. I felt like panicking. Me and my siblings were so anxious and so scared and were crying so much because there was only so much that we could do. And at the end of that phrase where I say, what could I do? I was just a baby. I'm your baby. It's a play on words. As a lot of people already know, my nickname is baby. That's what everybody calls me at home and in my neighborhood. And that's what everyone called me in my house. That's what my family refers to me as. My name is baby. I felt like being the baby in the situation. I shouldn't have had to see my mom in that position. You know, being the baby, I'm asking so many questions because... I, I genuinely don't know what to do. <laughs> Wanted to leave my phone off for a day. He's gonna better be notified that you weren't okay. But it ended up happening and I ended up losing it. I'm over here missing you, hoping that you listen. It was only that. When I say wanted to leave my phone off for days, couldn't better be notified that you weren't okay, but it ended up happening. I feel like that phrase is kind of self-explanatory, like, I remember wanting to like turn my phone completely off. I remember even when we were on our way to the hospital to visit my mom, there would be this huge trembling anxiety. Even when we were waiting for the visitor's passes to go upstairs to see her, there was just this big fear of anxiety leading up to seeing her, like sleeping at night, trying to wake up the next morning, you know, you fear getting a call from the hospital that something happened. And I remember feeling that way the entire time she was in the hospital. And, you know, it ended up happening anyway. I did end up getting a call from the hospital that something bad had really happened to her. And when I got the call that she passed away, I just remember losing it. And um, my friend was there, shout out to Claudia. Uh, Claudia has been one of my friends that have really been by my side through this. I just remember dropping my phone and just I was in so much shock, I froze. And then I just began to cry so much. And then two of my sister's friends had ran into the house and they grabbed me and they just all started hugging me and you know, just bringing comfort to me and my brother who was home at the time. My other siblings were in the hospital and actually had the unfortunate um, experience in, in actually watching my mom go. I've been yearning for this connection from my mom, which I do feel like I have gotten in so many ways in the last couple of months, but I've been yearning for this connection from my mom where it's like, you know, I just still want you to reach out to me in any way you can, you know? I hope that you're listening. I hope that you see, I hope that you see what I'm doing. And I feel like she is. I wanted to run away. I wanted to forget about everything. It was overwhelming, still overwhelming. Never wanted to get that feeling that my heart was melting. 
this first part of the second verse, I kind of go into my overall reaction from her passing. When I say that I never wanted to get that feeling that my heart was melting, I'm basically saying that when she passed, I felt like I was completely dead inside. There was this sinking feeling. I felt like in a weird way, I was like, like losing energy. Like I was being, figuratively speaking, like drained of just everything in my body. Like it was just this gut feeling of just like, like taking a plug out of a sink and just like having all of the water go down. That's kind of how I felt emotionally. I remember wanting to, like as soon after she passed, I was looking at Airbnbs. Like I was just trying to get away. I didn't care about services. I didn't care about like, you know, although I appreciate everyone that has called and came to my side, called and spoke to me and still does check up on me till this day. I did not want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to run away. It was too overwhelming for me to even talk to my own siblings because I just, everything was just happening at once and so many things were happening at once and I didn't like the feelings I felt. I couldn't eat, you know, it was hard to eat and I did eat, but when I did eat, I was eating to eat. I wasn't eating because I wanted to. I wasn't eating because I had an appetite. I wanna know why, why you were just someone that wanted to live their life. Try with all your mind. Fell so out of place that things don't even seem right. If you knew my mother, you knew that the one thing that she was about was living her life. My mom never let her illness own her. She never let her illness get the best of her. My mom made it her mission to spend quality time with us, have fun in so many ways. Every single month, she kept herself positive. She kept herself optimistic. And this is not to say that she didn't have her bad days, but she mainly was about living her life. She didn't let nothing stop her. My mom was really made of armor. And I always saw my mom as a superhero and this type of soldier because she never let anything face her. She walked with her head up high no matter what was going on with her health. She had so much more stuff that she wanted to do, not just with herself, but with us, her friends, her family. And when I say felt so out of place that things don't even seem right, I'm speaking for her and for us. A couple of months leading into, you know, just everything that happened to my mom and her overall passing, my mom began to feel like she was losing that confidence, that she was losing herself. Despite us, you know, telling her, you know, no, you're not, you're still the same person, you're still strong, you're still getting through it. You know, my mom fought COVID three times on top of her illness that she already had. We were always telling her, you know, like, you got this, you got this, you got this, you're strong. But this is also figuratively speaking. My mom told me one day that she kind of felt like she was rotting. Like she, so much stuff was happening to her body. It was to the point where like, she couldn't even make note of it anymore. And she felt very disoriented on top of, on top of, you know, severely depressed. It was very hard to pick herself up in the couple of months leading into her passing. And she did, you know, like she, whenever she was able to have some type of fun, she went out and she had her fun. But it's not to say that it wasn't hard and it's not to say that it wasn't difficult. Things began to feel really difficult last year for her. For us, you know, there is this, there still is this, feeling of disorientation. There still is this feeling of, are we here? Are we 100%? Are we stable? You know, that's something that I pray for every day for my siblings and family and friends and I that have been affected by my mom's passing. When she passed, I felt like I broke into a million pieces. And I remember just getting this urge to want to put everything back together. Like, I would say that I'm still picking up the pieces till this day. I just wanna go back in time to talk to you, hug and kiss you, and I'll be all right. And have you to tell me to just go on and live my life. This part is a response to the aftermath, 
but it's also my wish. I've been having wishes that I could physically speak and talk to my mom again. I just want to hear her say, you got this, just keep going. And I feel like she's telling me that in so many ways, but it's nothing like actually hearing her voice, hearing her, you know, put her hand on my shoulder, hug me, touch my face and just tell me, you got this, just keep going, just live your life. And one thing that I'm actually grateful for is that my mom prepared us on what to do with ourselves if something happened to her. So I was lucky and am grateful that I was able to be fed so much advice and life lessons and just messages from her because I feel like it's also helped me with the grieving process. I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I am going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I am going to live. hear me saying the song uh repeatedly that i'm going to live that f sentence is actually the very last thing that i told my mom you know other than i love you that sentence was the very last thing that i told my mom like an hour and a half before she passed um so that sentence alone just has a lot of meaning to it just because she always told me to live my life if something happened to be happy to be a big boy and just you know do me me telling her that i was going to live was a way of me letting her know i listened to everything you said and it's gonna be hard for me but i got this and i want to let you know, regardless of whatever happens to you, that I am going to live my life. Just to have that live part be repeated, um, especially with those harmonies and stacks, I wanted to give more of like a, core, a choir vibe, more of like a traditional R&B anthem vibe, you know, with a little choir in the background. So that was like my way of doing that. It was only that day that I learned to realize that It wants my heart to finally see the day where you say that you love me. And I love you a lot. <laughs> I love you too. Towards the end of here, you see me make some changes to the hook, right? You hear ad libs that start to ring out. The ad libs are my way of kind of like giving a farewell just to the song and just to like everything that I have explained in the song. And instead of saying, and what hurt the most is that you couldn't get up to say you love me, I actually say, but it warmed my heart to finally see you get up to say you love me. Because when she got off of life support, there was a time period where she actually was up and able to talk to us again. When she got extubated, that had to be literally one of the best days of my life. It gave me the reassurance to know the love was never going to stop. And to hear her finally tell us that she loved us and to stay strong and to stay together, it was very reassuring. And I close out the song inserting this recording that I had did with her. That recording belonged to an interview, a 40 to 50 minute interview that I actually did with her for a school project back in senior year of high school. And I found the recording a couple of weeks after she passed. I actually listen to that recording whenever I feel like hearing her voice. I have it right on the like display of my laptop and it's also on my phone. When you hear me tell her I love her and that, and then she tells me she loves me too. That's the ending of the recording that we had did. And I just love that I have that and I wanted to share, I felt like that recording snippet i feel like that little recording snippet wraps the song up in a bow perfectly like the little cherry on top <laughs>
This was the lyrical breakdown of 741. I hope that you guys liked it. Thank you guys for listening in. If you stay tuned for all of the content that I have coming to you, we are just getting started and happy new year. And yeah, peace out. I